Hey guys, this is Tommy from the Ravens Creek Study, and we're looking at an End Times 101 or an Eschatology 101. Right now I'm looking at the patterns of God, specifically the patterns of God under the context of the Kingdom of God. And we can start with Genesis 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was formless and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw the light, that it was good. And he called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and morning were the first day. We, we have, in this passage, darkness upon the face of the deep. Let me excuse this for a moment. Um, we have, in this passage, darkness upon the face of the deep, but, but God was not willing to allow his creation to remain in darkness. You have you have the Spirit itself coming down into the midst of that darkness to hover over the same waters. So think about your salvation. You were in darkness. Darkness was upon the face of the deep of your life. Our hearts yearned and cried out because of the darkness, and God was not content to allow us to remain in that darkness. This passage can also be an end-time passage. Just like the Holy Spirit, quote, hovers over the waters, stirring the creation into order and light, so too, at the end of the age, will there be a people who are the children of light, who have the Spirit within them, who are animated by the Spirit, directed by the Spirit, led by the Spirit, who cause the creation to stir because of, their, because of the Spirit in them, and because of their righteousness, and because of the light that they are emitting and who push back the darkness, even though darkness be all around them, and attempting to overcome them. Do you see how, how the, the, these patterns, when we read these scriptures as patterns, how they can quickly go into a, um, an end times understanding? Genesis 11 and 12, this is, this is the um, Tower of Babel incident leading right into the calling of Abraham. The nations were in opposition to God, coming together in a unity that parallels the end of the age, and yet God's response is not only confusing their language, it's not like God just says, yeah, I'll, I'll bring confusion to them, and that's the end of the story. It continues through chapter 11 to give us a genealogy to come unto Abraham, and in Abraham, in chapter 12, he's called out of all nations to be established as God's nation. That will bless all the other nations of the earth. So God's response to the Tower of Babel is not simply to confuse their language so they no longer do this wickedness. It's to bring out an Abraham to be the, the nation of God amidst all of the other nations so that all of the nations might be blessed and might come to God. Do you see here the complete love and mercy of God? His judgment is his mercy. I mean, how crazy is this? We see with Moses and Pharaoh. Pharaoh is a symbol of, of Satan who opposes and oppresses God's people. And in Daniel uh, 7, 21 and 25, we see this Antichrist figure, this little horn who wears out the saints and who, who tramples the saints, who overcomes the saints. And in Revelation 13, 7, it quotes these verses that he overcomes the saints. How is it that this Antichrist overpowers the saints, wears out the saints, and overcomes the saints? Just as in Exodus, God sent a deliverer, so too at the end of the age, during the final persecution of the ethnic Israel, God shall provide a deliverer, quote the church, uh, to deliver them from Pharaoh in Egypt, namely the Antichrist and his um, Jerusalem that he's established to himself. It is through these sorts of patterns, which we can we can continue from from Pharaoh to David and Goliath to essentially, actually, we could we could see these patterns through the entirety of the Bible. I mean, every chapter, virtually every chapter, every story has an end time significance if we are able to understand the end times, and then and then go back through these stories, we could start to see. Oh, I see that how that fits. Yeah, I see this now. It's through these sorts of patterns that we can begin to build an understanding of God's purposes and plans, even if we don't necessarily have the whole understanding brought about via the prophets and apostles. But I am wanting to get there, and I am wanting to teach this to you. God has given us the ability to piece it together with the help of the Holy Spirit, of course. Even if the scriptures are for some reason unavailable to us, simply knowing the patterns of history and God's dealings that take place over and over again will give us a reasonable conclusion to understanding the end times. So next I'm going to look at the New Covenant, and I thank you, <laughs> I, 
Maybe I should. Eh, I don't know if that matters. Um, we're going to look at the ne new covenant next. And until next time, grace and peace to you in Christ. And I, I bless you in Jesus' name.